1380, The Biz, the Wall Street Business Network. Are you one of the 9 million Floridians living in a community managed by a property manager or HOA? If you've ever wondered what your rights are as a resident or what your role is as a volunteer board member, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Condo Coaches, your resource for when your gated community starts to feel more like you're stuck behind bars or when that guy next door decides that a hot pink Chevy on cinder blocks really sets the tone for the neighborhood. The Condo Coaches is brought to you by LMFunding.com. Find the Condo Coaches online at thecondocoaches.com. And now your host, Johnny Torres. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, as always, for listening and watching us live on Facebook.com slash The Condo Coaches. Facebook.com slash The Condo Coaches, where we always live stream our radio show. And, of course, thank you for listening to us, whether you be listening on one of our radio stations across the state of Florida or our podcast, which you can find on SoundCloud or iTunes. All you've got to do is search for The Condo Coaches. That's The Condo Coaches. And if you want to get a hold of us, you can always engage with us online or in person. Uh, and then you can do that at our website, thecondocoaches.com, thecondocoaches.com. Our phone number is 813-331-5415, 813-331-5415, and our email. Our email is also a great way to get a hold of us. Help at thecondocoaches.com, help at thecondocoaches.com, because that's what we do around here. We like to help people. We have a good time doing it. And if it's your first time listening, the Condo Coaches like to assist the board of directors at your community or neighborhood association, helping them operate efficiently, effectively, on budget with anything and everything you need. So if you ever find yourself in a tough spot and you're sitting on the board of directors, you got to call the condo coaches. So with that introduction, as always with us, head coach Dean Akers. How you doing, Dean? Good, Johnny. Another big week for condo coaches. I know. Uh, a lot of things going on. Ramping up for a trade show, I heard. Ramping up for a trade show. Uh, obviously, the second book is out. That yeah. is uh, just going crazy. People downloading it and uh, already printing out hundreds of copies yep we're gonna have we have a trade show coming up where we're gonna have both copies and coaches there and down in south florida i'll get that next week for us and for those of you not familiar with our playbooks uh what dean's talking about is a free download if you go to the condocoaches.com go to the playbook section that's the condocoaches.com slash playbook you can now go directly to that section fill out the form for us we will email you are two booklets. The first one, which is the top 10 things you need to know if you're a COA or HOA board member. And our newest booklet is collecting delinquent HOA and COA fees. Yeah. Uh, because again, that's always the toughest part, whether it be legally or just handling that whole situation, because obviously it's a very uncomfortable position to be in for most people. So uh, those two booklets have been incredibly key to the success of this show and to the success of the condo coaches, because people just can't get enough copies of this. Not only will they download a copy but then they'll email us and ask us to mail them a hard copy and they're asking us you know of course for a copy for all their board members and you can do that too all you've got to do is go to the condo coaches.com the condo coaches.com or you can email us too and we'll uh, get all your info via email and email you some uh, email you a copy or mail you the hard yeah. copies right because we're yeah. running off copies every single day uh, a hardcover copy and you can do that uh, by sending us your address to help at the condo coaches.com help at the condo coaches.com and uh, with us once again this is episode number three for you right number three Jonathan. oh man love it all right candace gundall our legal coach uh, and uh, the original condo coach uh, one of the original condo coaches uh, for those of you who haven't heard candace on the show before Candace is an attorney here in the Tampa Bay area. She represents condominiums, homeowner associations, and cooperatives in all legal aspects of community management and living, in addition to managing her firm's statewide corporate governance division for community associations. Ms. Gundel personally handles collection litigation for associations in Central Florida. So welcome back. Thank you. So I think today, because of course, you know, this is uh, the original show back together. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of the common questions, you know, what they call the FAQs, frequently asked questions by the people that listen to the show, reach out to us on our website, reach out to us through Facebook. And we do monitor all of them constantly. So we are getting all of your questions. And if you sent us a question recently, it may take us a few days to get to you, but we will get to you. And uh, some of those we might even address today. So. 
Well, you know, <clears throat> one of the things is, and I know when people, we're, we're, we're actually going to do a better job on this. Okay. We're a group of volunteers. Right. Volunteers, we're getting a lot of questions, a lot of great uh, input. If people might have been behind a little bit, but we're getting our arms around our volunteers Good. being really timely to get back. So any apologies to anybody that might be waiting for a particular document or a, an answer right now, they're in the queue and we're getting them done, Johnny. Awesome. So you can expect a response soon if you haven't heard from us. We are playing a little bit of catch up, but uh, that's part of the exciting uh, part about yeah. being in, in, in kind of a, what they call startups nowadays and kind of something new and groundbreaking and growing faster than you can really kind of grab a hold on to. So uh, again, email, Facebook, our website, all great ways to get a hold of us. Just give us a little bit of time, you know, if you haven't heard from us, because we will get to you. Uh, as we always like to kick off the show, we like to go through, again, those same questions, scenarios that people send to us through the website, through Facebook. Uh, and do you uh, want to kick this one off with? Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, I got. I, I have. A, I have a. Um, you know, I'm a freak for communication. That's kind of kinda like my my deal. And so <laughs> we've had a couple of boards recently <clears throat> reach back out with this whole communication deal. It's not a PDF on the site, but if they go to the help at thecondocoaches.com, yeah, I've got a ten point communication between property management company and the board. Nice. And uh, we've sent it out to some uh, board members that were kind of angsting, if you will, about the communications. And when you read it, you can see communications goes both ways. And by the way, these 10 points, they work in real life. In other words, it's not just. Yeah, you got to apply it for it to work. <laughs> yeah, but it's, but you don't have to be a board of director with a condo associate. It'll probably help you with your. Oh, it wife. applies to everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. For your husband. Right. Well, again, yeah. happy wife, happy life, right? Oh, totally, totally. So, so we've we've had a good week. Um, we had a uh, we went down and, and met a venue that we're doing a. Uh, a we're gonna, it's not going to be a live show, or but we're going to do some recording of a, a show down in the Delray. Went down and met with the boards. Twenty two associations have invited us in to do a condo coach workshop for two hours. They've told us the topics. We're bringing the coaches in. It's just going to be too much fun, too much information as far as good information. And I think those the 22 associations are totally excited. They've been emailing me again today. They're they're all ready. That's incredible. And and actually, you know, one of the questions we got recently through the website was, <sighs> uh, hey, I live down in Sarasota. Are you guys willing to come to Sarasota? Absolutely. I mean, not only is Sarasota fairly close for us that live here in the Tampa Bay area, but, you know, again, we have condo coaches all around the state of Florida. And if you need us to come down to South Florida, even the central Florida area in Orlando, be more than happy to do that and put on a workshop for you. If you want to get a number number of associations together, or even if it's just your board of directors, we'll send a condo coach out there to talk to those yeah, guys. Absolutely. And, uh, and one of the things we always talk about, of course, is the community assessment. And that's typically where we start. Uh, but you know, having an opportunity like that, 22 associations in one room, that's incredible. And uh, I'm sure the impact's going to be pretty great in that area. Well, I'm sending the assessments out now, and people are filling them out. And I have several boards that when they fill it out, we, we, we kind of do an overview of their situation. Mm -hmm. And then we have a section where they can send their financials in. They can PDF those in to us. And we're given really, really, really good what I call a snapshot of their financial status year on year and things they want to look at. And then some other governance type stuff in this, in this uh, assessment that we send out to see if they're on their game. Now, Candace, starting at the ground level, you know, we hear that there's a form that you have to sign when you become a board member. Uh, right. And of course that's something that we help with. So tell us a little bit about exactly what that's accomplishing for the state and, and how that kind of falls into the responsibilities of being on a board of directors. Sure. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, the La Florida legislature amended Florida statute and put in a, what I call was a smart requirement, sort of a common sense thing. And that is if you're going to be on your board of directors, you need to have read your governing documents. Period. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate we, to beg to differ because you're the legal coach. <laughs> I don't know that that's happening 100% of the time. Well, and it certainly wasn't. So yeah. the goal of the, of the legislation was to say once you become a board member in your association, within the first 90 days, you have to sign a certificate that says you've read your governing documents cover to cover. 
and that you're going to do your best, you know, your fiduciary duty here that we talked about in a couple episodes to back. To adhere to those. To and... adhere to those, to, um, to enforce them, to help the community out. Now, in lieu of that, or in addition to that, you mm-hmm. can actually take a board member certification class. Okay. Where you go and you you listen to, there are typically vendors in the area that will do one, right? Um, and they'll the take, condo coaches will do one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, and and again, I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, not only are these hundreds of pages thick mm-hmm. in some communities, but also there's a lot of legal jargon too that people don't exactly understand how to interpret. Uh, and so, you know, they absolutely need help, I think, in that regards. And and also to make sure that they are genuinely following uh, the contract, basically, that they're signing on to when they fill out that form. Yeah. And speaking, you know, somebody who's read hundreds, probably thousands of these at this point in my career, a lot of the older ones, man, that's tiny, tiny type from the 1970s oh, yeah, that's sure. been copied a hundred times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be a real challenge to get a good copy to read. Wow. Uh, but it, it's something that's important and that we want boards to make sure they're doing and that we'd be happy to come out and help them with. If somebody has that kind of a, c- a scenario where they have a really old set of governing documents, what's the best approach there? we got about a minute left, but what, what, what do you do in that case if, if, if it's almost illegible at this point? Well, there's a couple of different things we can do. Uh, you can always go back to the county and get the original documents. Okay. It might be still really small typeface, but it'll help you with reading it. It'll be a clean copy at least. <laughs> but on those old documents, 99% of the time, they need updated. So you need to you know, get in there and look and see to make sure your governing documents are relevant to your association the way it is now and going to protect the association moving forward. All right, so we're talking frequently asked questions today it's for your homeowner association, condominium association. If you are on the board of directors or even a resident, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can drop us comments, questions on our Facebook live stream. That's facebook.com slash the condo coaches, facebook.com slash the condo coaches, or you can always reach out to us on your own time sure. at the condo coaches.com, our website, the condo coaches.com, our phone number too. If you want to leave us a message there with your comment, your question, your situation, situation it's 813-331-5415 813-331-5415 more of your frequently asked questions coming up on the condo coaches contact the condo coaches online at the condocoaches.com more of the condo coaches is coming up next I'm a firefighter. A teacher. I'm a farmer. I'm a barber. A waitress. A mom. We're all part of your community. Every day we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when you experience a moment of uncertainty. Something or someone's behavior that doesn't seem quite right. These are the moments to take a pause. Because if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. It's not about paranoia. Or being afraid. It's about standing up and protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Just like you should. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Welcome back to The Condo Coaches, online at thecondocoaches.com. Here's your host, Johnny Torres. Thank you once again for listening. If you missed an episode, you can catch us just about anywhere and everywhere. Of course, at our website, thecondocoaches.com, thecondocoaches.com. You can also watch all of our episodes either on Facebook or YouTube. So you can go to our Facebook page or you can find us on YouTube at The Condo Coaches uh, and podcast it. SoundCloud. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes, of course, and it's a great listen, especially if you're going to be stuck in traffic. You might as well learn something. So subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud or on iTunes. Uh, we're doing frequently asked questions today, so you can send yours if you're watching us on Facebook right now, or you can email us, help at thecondocoaches.com, help at thecondocoaches.com. We've got uh, a email here that came through our website from Rosemary, who's in Vero Beach. She said... Uh, do we have a list of the most valuable committees for condominiums? Now, I don't think we've constructed a list together, but uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about what would be a valuable committee for a an HOA or a COA to establish. 
Uh, that, that's a good question. That's, that's an interesting question. Great, great, yeah. Good job, Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes your governing documents will actually say you have to have this type of committee, and they'll mm. list some. Most common are uh, the architectural review committees. So if and that, wants, that's typically in a, let's say, a townhome or single-family home type of community, right? It is, but you know what? Condominiums should have them, too, because people want to make modifications to the interior of their units or their patio, or oh, okay. they want to do something in their parking space. Yeah. And it's surprising to a lot of people, but your documents actually regulate that. So you want to make sure that right. everybody's doing it correctly. Or they want to slap a dish on the outside of their balcony. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a big one people don't think about uh-huh. is if you have a condominium and you have carpet and let's say you want to put in wood floors, that might not be allowed because of the sound effects that it will have on okay. units below you. Well, we did get a comment. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had a, a scenario where someone emailed us with a, a, a situation similar to that, yeah. which is basically what happens in that situation? Are they allowed to change the flooring? When can they change the flooring? I mean, really, all that comes down to what we were talking about in the last story, which is looking back at your governing documents. Well, in that case, they the person that originally owned the unit had an exemption mm-hmm. for themselves, and then somebody bought it, and the exemption was specific to, quote, bill, if you will. Right. And so did it was non-transfer. Trans- well, yeah. we didn't know. Oh, okay. Would it transfer with the unit was the question. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so that's that was an a- important one. Right, yeah. yeah. Architectural Review Committee, b- big one. Okay, Architectural Review Committee. Dean, you got one? Uh, my my big one is the compliance committees that the, and this is I see this a lot where they go around call it the rules committee yeah uh, or the fine committee yeah the fine it. committee mm-hmm. that they go around and they look for the person that puts trash on their on their balcony right. and stuff like that isn't cutting the grass yeah and they right. write fines they're like they're like condo cops right yeah you know and, those are the ones everybody hates they're not popular no. But I mean, and, and, but in all honesty, that's why you move into those communities with an association so they keep up the community. Because then inevitably, because I've seen it, you'll have somebody that will paint their house purple. And trust me, uh, I've seen it because I used to drive by one every single day. <laughs> and you'll end up with a purple house in your community. Mm-hmm. Um, and a communications committee. Oh, totally. They They I, definitely need a communications committee because... Every time we run into issues, just like these people that are arguing about fines, yeah, these people have moved in, and I go, "Well, what'd you give them?" And they give them this big packet of stuff. Right now, if you put a that twenty dollar, yeah, put it. I used to give books away to people, mm-hmm. and they go, "Oh," and I put twenty dollars in on page two hundred, <laughs> and then they, I'd say, "How was the book?" They go, "Ding, that is the best book I ever read." I said, "Go to page two hundred when you get home. There's a really cool piece in there." They go and open the twenty. The twenty's in there. They know. I know. Guess what? <laughs> they didn't read the they book. They didn't read the book. <laughs> That's and, a good one. And, yeah, and that that money's always safe, right? Because I make them give it back to me at that juncture. Oh, funny. <laughs> Well, in and it, typically when I join organizations, I mean that's that it ends up being the committee I end up on because it's it's for me. I don't know. I enjoy it. You know, you get to do the newsletters and the emails and you business. know set up all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's what I love to do, and so it's it's an easy win for me to kind of serve on a, in a communications role in, in those types of organizations, and you know, an association's no different. Um, so uh, a little add on here from Rosemary. She goes. Uh, Really appreciate the condo coaches. Love all your videos on YouTube. Uh, my condo's in Vero Beach. Do you guys come to this area? And again, we mentioned that last segment. We yeah. absolutely do. We'd love to come to Vero Beach. We will bring our swim trunks and sunglasses. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Rosemary, thank you so much for reaching out. Uh, and uh, let's uh, keep going here. We got Beth um, who's reaching out to us, I think from uh, Pinellas County. She goes, what is your opinion on the following question? Uh, when a weekly meeting is held with the property manager to discuss maintenance issues, can the entire board be present for the discussion? Uh, this would be a quorum, but no voting on the maintenance issues occur. We have a resident that says it's against Florida statute. We touched on this question, I think, maybe in the last episode, but I felt that it was a good one because, again, yeah, that's there, great. there's a little bit of a legal curveball there, you know, in terms yes. of, you know, uh, who can and can attend, and what what does it mean if the entire board attends? Right. Well, if you have a quorum, so if you have a majority of your board of directors, uh, it has to be a noticed board meeting. So generally, your forty eight hour notice, and it has to be open to the members. The exception is if you're meeting with your attorney for litigation, or you're meeting to discuss sensitive personnel information. But otherwise, a meeting like that would have to be open to the members and properly noticed. Okay. So you can't. You can have the meeting, and all the board uh, can be there, mm-hmm. but the, the residents need to be allowed to attend as well. Right. Exactly. Okay. 
Got if it. it was a weekly meeting, would you just have a standard uh, one-time notice that every every Friday we meet at noon with the property management company? You or probably, do you have to post every week at a 48 hour? You probably week? can. And actually, it's funny because that came up at, with an HOA that I was at last week. Mm-hmm. And their documents would allow them to make one meeting post and say, these are the dates, the times, the place for each of these. But your bylaws may require you to post each one individually, so that's something you have to look at your governing documents for. But, you know, best question actually ties back into Rosemary's is okay. committee meetings have to be noticed and open to the membership as well. Oh, yeah, that's good to know. Because, again, <laughs> that's probably not in the governing documents because they don't typically include committees, right? Right. Okay, but those have to be noticed as well to the residents. Right. If they're going to make any kind of decisions, they need to be noticed and open. Now, what if they don't make the decisions, but they make suggestions to the board at the board meetings? It might not be required, but still really good policy. Okay. Well, again, transparency, communication, making sure that nobody thinks there's things going on behind the scenes without them knowing. Right. All right. Well, and uh, we actually got a great comment here from Reagan on our Facebook page, which is uh, Cork Barrier for Sound. He goes, we find that the majority of condominium associations will will allow for a floor <laughs> change as long as we use proper sound barrier. And so that it maybe eliminates. So it'd be mm-hmm. a good compromise there. Yeah, right? that's absolutely you true. Know. On that sound issue, when we talked about changing the flooring and having an architectural review committee, uh, sometimes there are ways around it yeah. so that you can dampen the sound so that it doesn't affect your neighbors. Cool. Well, thank you, Reagan, uh, for that great tip. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, so let's get into, again, some of the other frequently asked questions. Um, Now that we, of course, uh, have been, you know, we're now episode 13. I mean, so which is incredible. Yeah. And we find a lot of people that we talk to who are first time board members, which is why we've now probably given out and printed, I think, uh, about 2000 copies of our booklet. Uh, top 10 things you need to know uh, for if you're a board member on a homeowners or com- condominium association, and you can get that at the condocoaches.com. What's the one question that seems to come up every single time? Because again, you people are volunteering oftentimes because they just want to help. They want to see their community uh, do well and, and maintain itself uh, and sometimes don't really know what they're getting into. I think the biggest question I keep coming or keeps coming back to me besides communication is finance slash something's not right. Mm -hmm. And 100% of the time so far that has always gone back to them, not understanding accrual based accounting and having horrible accounts receivable, because if everybody's paying that number should be zero every month and all the money be in the bank. So what happens is it still shows us as a sale that month, but there's no money in the bank. And that's where, if you don't understand accrual accounting, they're going, somebody's taking the money. No, they're not taking the money. Some of your residents are not paying and you're having to pay for them. And they're not collecting. Correct. Yeah. Well, um, Candice, do you have, we got a couple minutes. Do you have a frequently Mm -hmm. asked question in terms of from new board members, right? From a legal perspective, is it, there's something that you find that frequently isn't done or, or they don't quite know how to do once they join the board? (laughs) It's interesting because a lot of what I get asked questions about relates to enforcing their governing documents. So they have a provision that they've read or that their neighbor told them about, or they thought they remember reading when they first moved in. And they say, you know, I need to find that, I need to know what it says, and I need to know whether we can enforce it and how we enforce it. And so, you know, sometimes it's the size of the mailbox, sometimes it's the weight of the dog, the type of roof, or things like that. But okay. what's what's funny, and it's the reason our second Condo Coaches book is about collections, is because when I really sit down and say, what is your challenge? What is the <laughs> real concern behind this question? It's because they want to accomplish something, but they're struggling to do it because of the finances of the community. Right. And that's either because they don't understand the financials or they have a problem with collecting past due assessments. Right, and they're completely unaware in terms of where they truly stand financially. Right. All right. So, again, we're doing frequently asked questions on the condo coaches today. If you want to participate, send us a comment uh, or leave us a question on our Facebook stream, facebook.com slash the condo coaches, or reach out to us, 813-331-5415 is our phone number. 813-331-5415 is our number. We also love taking questions via email. We will get back to you as soon as possible. All you've got to do is shoot us an email. 
help at thecondocoaches.com. That's help at thecondocoaches.com. Download our playbook right now, collecting HOA and COA fees if they're delinquent at thecondocoaches.com. We'll be back. Segment three next. Contact the Condo Coaches online at thecondocoaches.com. More of the Condo Coaches is coming up next. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better. And kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. Welcome back to The Condo Coaches, online at thecondocoaches.com. Here's your host, Johnny Torres. Once again, you got to get it now. Download it, or we'll even send you a hard copy. Top 10 things you need to know if you are a board member on your homeowners or condominium association. That is our first premium download, or we, as we like to call our playbook. Uh, and our new one is collecting delinquent HOA and COA fees. And you can get them both in a single email just by visiting our website, thecondocoaches.com slash playbook, thecondocoaches.com slash playbook. We are doing questions Frequently asked questions for board of directors and residents. If you are in a community with a condominium or homeowners association, uh, with us, of course, as always, head coach Dean Akers and our guest coach uh, with us once again for her third show, Candice Gundel. And, uh, and again, just a little refresher for those of you who may just be listening. Uh, Candice is an attorney here in the Tampa Bay area representing condominiums, homeowners associations, and cooperatives in all legal aspects of community management and living. So frequently asked questions. We got uh, we were touched on renters a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's always a very touchy subject in no matter what community you live in, especially since, of course, the recession you know, so many properties have gone into rentals, uh, both uh, individually owned and owned by investment companies. So uh, we have a question here from Pat, and I think she's also in uh, the Sarasota area. And she goes, we have rental units in our HOA community. Does the renter contact the owner for any problems or should they contact the board directly? And then the second part of the that uh, question is, also, should renters be interviewed by the board or only the owner? Uh, now, I, I kind of know the answer here, but let's kind of get the official word. Um, <laughs> let's tackle the first part of that question, which is, uh, in case of any problems with that particular home or unit, does the uh, owner, uh, I'm sorry, does the renter contact the owner or the board of directors? The renter should contact the owner. The owner is the one that's responsible for the property and everything that happens there. Um, however... It's really great for boards and associations to have good uh, communications with their renters because it might be something that tends to be more association uh, centric. Mm -hmm. So if a renter says, oh, you know, I noticed coming home the other day, the front gate to the association was squeaking, right. you, you know, give that heads up to your to your association. Sure. But if it's anything to do with the actual property they're renting, they need to go to their landlord. Right. So it really depends on what the issue is. But yeah. more often than not, they, they should go to the owner first. Yes. Okay. Now, the second part of that question, and this is always, this is where it gets touchy because, of course, uh, and, and we talked a little bit about how do you control, you know, or can you control renters? And and uh, I think we might have been talking about that, you know, before the show started. But uh, when it comes to renting a uh, home or a unit um, and there's an interview process, does that happen by the owner or does it happen by the board or both? Well, if the association wants to do one, it has to be in their governing documents. So in order for an Got association it. to have any kind of ability to review 
uh, a rental application or approve or deny a rental application or a sales application. It has to be in the governing documents. It's very specific. There's a lot of case law on it. So I wouldn't undertake that without legal counsel for sure. Yeah. So, that, I mean, really, if if there is not a policy in place to do this, they have to then implement one, right? And kind of really think it out, plan it out yes. as to how that gets handled. Yes. And it's an amendment to the governing document. Right. So it's a vote of the membership. It's, it's, so it's not, not a small undertaking. So it's not just some policy that they can just implement, you know, right away. And, right. Uh, you know what a board can do, though, is right away they can implement a policy. And maybe that's another committee. Back to Rosemary's question sure. earlier is you have a welcome committee. It right. goes in and welcomes new residents to the neighborhood and gives them, uh, you know, a Cliff Notes rules and regulations so that they know they're living in a community, what is expected of them, and then it gives you an opportunity to open those lines of communication. Well, and in that situation, right, so let's say they do have this welcome committee that's mm-hmm. going to basically screen renters is going to be part of the responsibility of this welcome committee. Can they set guidelines that by which the renters have to meet? Um, or is it just an interview process that they're allowed? Like, are they allowed to dictate, you know, and I know there's all kinds of, you know, be, because of, you know, racial requirements or right. l- legalities. Um, so, again, are there are there certain stipulations? Are there certain requirements that they can uh, enforce on anyone who wants to rent out their, their home or, or unit? Yes. Yes, okay. they can. And, again, they have to be written guidelines. They have to be in their governing documents, in the declaration mm-hmm. via amendment. But, yeah, absolutely. Some communities have income restrictions. Um, some have, uh, you know, history of criminal activity, criminal convictions. Okay. Uh, things like that you can go into. You can't you can't discriminate. Right. The association sure. can't discriminate just like the landlord can't discriminate. So you have to be very careful with the fair housing regulations. Mm-hmm. But there are things that they can put into place. And the owner can interview if they want, right? That's totally up to them. I mean, Absolutely. That, that doesn't really bear any – at the end of the day, it's whether or not there is a board approval that's necessary or right. a committee approval that's necessary for you to rent your unit or home out to that individual. Correct. You're seeing a lot of associations, though, now, <clears throat> and they're getting it through um, where they have background checks, all that as part of their documents that are required. So and and you usually don't find residents if that's an amendment and she can speak to it from a legal standpoint, but you don't usually find uh, residents too upset about implementing background checks and stuff, especially today. Right now, when we were talking about this off air, you also mentioned kind of a unique scenario where the renter was actually an immediate family member. It was the, I think a, the daughter mm-hmm. of the person who owned the unit. At that point, are they still legally required to go through the interview process, um, even if, let's say, for instance, there is no official leasing document? You know, so again, if, if I'm the unit owner and I decide that you know my I'm going to rent my place out to my daughter. And she may or may not be paying me every month to live there. You know, at that point, does does my daughter have to go through the interview process to live there? Well, and that's going to depend on how your documents are drafted. So how your rental restrictions are drafted. Okay. If it says tenant and the daughter's not paying rent, doesn't have a lease, then no. If it says resident, then that implies any person that lives there. And you have to define resident, you know, any person that lives there for more than 30 consecutive days in a 12-month period. Let's gotcha. say. Then, yes, you could put the daughter through the same protocol as a, a tenant. All right. Well, and again, you know, we, of course, would love to help you out with any of these kind of scenarios. If you're looking to implement something like this in your community, that's what the condo coaches are here for. If you want to schedule a meeting with one of our condo coaches, reach out to us. Uh, you can do that by phone, 813-331-5415, 813-331-5415. That's the number to reach the condo coaches. You can email us, help at the condo coaches.com help at the condo coaches.com is our email address and of course through our website we've got like three different ways on our website for you to get a hold of us all work just the same so visit us on our website the condo coaches.com the condo coaches.com and one of the great thing is is that if you reach out to us through our website at our playbook section we're going to email you right back with your own copies of our first booklet which is top 10 things you need to know if you're an association board member. Right. And and it's a great read, even if you're just a resident. Sure. Uh, and, of course, our newest booklet, which just came out a couple weeks ago, which is collecting delinquent HOA and COA fees, both incredibly valuable. Uh, again, even if you're just a resident, but definitely 
if you are a board member. These are absolutely must downloads, and you can do that right now at condocoaches.com, thecondocoaches.com slash playbook. That's thecondocoaches.com slash playbook. I forgot the the in the first time I said that, so I wanted to, <laughs> wanted to make sure I clarified that. So um, now let's delve into maybe kind of some of the deeper issues that you typically come across. Um, when getting into, again, some of the financial issues, some of the legal issues, what are some of the more common, uh, you know, we, of course, touched on collections. Uh, what does that process even look like? What is that? How does it begin? You know, what what do you need to do before you can be begin the collections process? Well, you need to have your finances in good shape. So you need to have a reliable accounting system that you trust and that is accurate and up to date. And that that's a foundational thing, really, for anyone, any business, any individual. But that's that's the first step. Um, then you need to have a policy in place. And it, it could be as easy as the board, you know, writing down on a piece of paper, this is what we're going to do. And maybe it's if somebody doesn't pay after 15 days, then they get a friendly reminder. Now, real quick, it, you, you know, in terms of having your finances in order, mm -hmm. let's say there's a community that does not have a property management company that they're working with. Can you then instead hire a CPA, an accounting firm? Absolutely. To, okay. All right. Great. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to have a licensed community association manager run your accounting. Okay. Um, but for those that do have a community association manager, typically the same company will handle both for you. Right. And they've yeah. got a whole process in place and they've got a whole system in place to do that for you. Yes. But the board ultimately gets to decide, you know, how many friendly reminders or late notices do we want to send? Is it one? Is it three? We usually see two or three. Um, and then at what point do you actually start formal collection procedure then? You know, is it do you send it to an attorney? Um, is your management company going to handle it in house? But how are you going to do that and at what time frame is an important decision for the board to make and then to do in every single case. And do you find there ever being any issues uh, in terms of collections with a property management company or are they usually pretty good about handling that? The issues that we find are a, a difference in expectations between the board and the manager, which, of course, you know, head coach Dean yeah. here and his communications. It's, it's yeah. true, though. But that's. That's the biggest issue we see is that the board was thinking one thing or intended another. The management company has their standard procedure that they follow and making sure that those two things align. Gotcha. How about you, Dean? Yeah, the the, uh, <clears throat> the contracts that the management companies, back to communication, mm -hmm. they're just like governing documents. People don't read them. They become yeah. a board member and they don't even read what the management companies obligated themselves to do, timing. And that's why we did the 10 tips for communication between sure. management companies and stuff because they get all upset. The board members go, well, they're just not communicating with us. So I said, well, send me a copy of your, your, your contract. We'll review it. We'll have some of our management company experts review it and tell you where you missed it. So far, we're a hundred out of a hundred, so to speak of they didn't know as a board member what the expectation was. And then they didn't, uh, execute on that expectation saying, hey, by the close of this date, you're supposed to have done this. Well, and again, one of the things the condo coaches can do for your board of directors is come in. If you're looking to kind of smooth out any issues with sure. your property management company, or maybe you're looking to change property management companies because you're unhappy with your property management company, we'd love to come out, talk to you, kind of guide you, explain to you the situation that you're in and obviously what your needs are and also make recommendations, you know, because again, you're going to have to go through these contracts. And again, most people have no idea how to read contracts contracts and, and exactly, you know, how to deconstruct some of that that legal text in there. And so we'd be more than happy to come take a look at those contracts for you. The Condo Coaches will handle it for you. Just reach out to us at thecondocoaches.com, thecondocoaches.com, our website, or 813-331-5415. Our final segment coming up on Frequently Asked Questions. Contact the Condo Coaches online at thecondocoaches.com. More of the Condo Coaches is coming up next. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. I don't know if you've noticed, but we got a lot of food in this country. A lot of peaches, a lot of corn, a lot of apples, a lot of everything. We've got so much food that we can't even eat it all. So if we got all this extra food... How are 17 million kids in America struggling with hunger? I just don't get it. 
That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gathers surplus food and gets it to the hungry kids who need it. They can get you food even if you live in Idaho or Alaska or somewhere crazy like that. This isn't complicated. We got extra food and we got hungry kids. Feeding America's done the math. Now it's your turn. Support Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. I know you got internet on your phone, so what are you waiting for? We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to The Condo Coaches, online at thecondocoaches.com. Here's your host, Johnny Torres. Thank you so much. The Condo Coaches radio show available worldwide 24-7 on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Facebook. So just look up The Condo Coaches wherever you like to spend your time online, and more than likely we'll be there for you to catch up on any past episodes. We're now in episode 13, uh, 12 if you don't count the pilot, but you know we love counting the pilot because that was the first one when you know Candace joined us and, of course, Dean, and we kicked things off, and it's been an incredible run so far, and uh, the response has been amazing. You've got a workshop coming up down in uh, kind of sort of southwest f- South Florida. Delray. Delray, right. So, And that's going to be like 22 associations, yeah. which is unbelievable. And we, we've yet, I mean, we've been talking about it kind of behind the scenes, but we've yet to start to plan our first kind of big workshop seminar. Right. But that's, that's it's only a matter of time. Yep. You know, uh, that that's coming down the road, and I'm incredibly excited about that. And uh, we're even talking about doing the Condo Coaches show live from one of these workshops or seminars. And so keep an eye out for that and subscribe on our website, thecondocoaches.com, uh, for you to stay up to speed on all that because that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we ended the last segment in talking about property management companies and some of the issues there. You were talking about how uh, if you're changing property management company every couple of years, the problem is not the property management company. Right. <laughs> so, right. you know, and, and again, this is kind of where maybe you need a mediator, right? Maybe you need somebody to kind of come in and play a neutral body between the two organizations and we'll figure out pretty quickly, you know, whether the problem is in the room at the, in the, with the board of, of directors or with the property management company. Uh, but if you are looking to change, we're willing to look over those contracts as well and give you some feedback on whether the property management company you're considering is, is, is good or maybe there are better options out there. Well, the communication issue between the both are equally wrong because one of the biggest things we find is, and, and we try to deal with this in business too, where one party goes, when are you going to get that to us? And the other party goes, uh, as soon as possible. So they get in their cars and they leave. I have a habit when I do communication meetings of writing down exactly, I give a pen out and say, everybody write exactly what time <laughs> as soon as possible is. Well, you can see the train wreck immediately. Yeah, of course. And it goes both ways. The property management firm should be going, so what is date certain we need it back? Right. And, and setting it basically as a goal, really. I mean, that setting that date essentially sets up a goal for everyone to be on the same page by that date. And we had one more thing. I, I'm blessed to have gotten my pilot's license years and years ago. And one of the first things they teach you in pilot training is a term called read back. So when you're talking to control, like Tampa International, and they'll say, my old plane used to be 735 Hotel Mike. They go, 735 Hotel Mike, you're cleared to runway 27 right. You don't just go, Roger. Right. You go, Tampa Control, 7, 2, 7, 3, 735 Hotel Mike is cleared to 27 right. You do affirmative readbacks. Well, in communications with boards and stuff, it's just, I can't tell you how many times I'll sit in a board meeting and somebody will say something and you can almost see the other person glossing over and they go, yeah, I got you. Not a chance <laughs> no, in the world. No. It completely out the window. And then they're going to land on one eight, whatever, and crash into everybody and it burns. Yeah, that person completely checked yeah. out. So on an airplane, if you don't do a read back or if you get that wrong, you don't get to go that property management firm. No, you're dead. Sure. So. Well, what, and also one of the things that I think it probably gets uh, overlooked, maybe more so than anything, in my opinion, is how to run these meetings, right? Whether it's a board meeting, whether it's a resident meeting, whether, and one of the things that I hear across organizations in and outside of uh, condominium and homeowner associations is Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. How important is it 
it, to ensure that everything you're doing is legally kind of on the up and up, you know, to follow Robert's rules and, and why? The Robert's rules is the gold standard for meetings, even in associations. And it's important to follow it, although I would say that for most community associations, the meetings tend to be a little more informal, so you don't have to necessarily follow it to the letter. Okay. But it's important that you're calling a meeting to order, that you have an agenda, that you're sticking to that agenda, and that if you are uh, considering uh, voting on something, that you actually make a motion on the record of what it is, that you get a second, and then you vote on it before you move on so that you have a clean record of exactly what business transacted there. And so at that point, it's also <laughs> incredibly important that you have a good secretary in place you know, that is tracking you know, who made the motion, who seconded the motion, and what the vote was to get these things passed or if they failed. Correct. A good secretary. And I also recommend that to my associations that you at least do an audio recording. It's very easy with cell phones nowadays. Sure. Right. Um, that way, when you go back at the next board meeting, they should be reviewing the typed minutes. And if there is any discrepancy or concern or somebody remembers it differently, then you've got that audio that you can play back. Well, now with you know Google and Dropbox and there's so many services out there where you can store it for free. Exactly. You know, there's no reason why you don't just record the entire meeting and then take that audio file and, and, and dump it into that reservoir to make sure that there's a historical record there. Right. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So frequently asked questions. That's what we're talking about today in the condo coaches. And we've got the, the, the band back together. <laughs> uh, so uh, our legal coach, Candace Gundall, our head coach, Dean Akers. And if there's a question you are have been wanting to ask the condo coaches uh, now into episode 13, you can do that at our website, thecondocoaches.com, thecondocoaches.com. Download our two playbooks. We can't talk enough about them because they are incredibly valuable. Uh, and you are getting them absolutely free. You go to the condocoaches.com slash playbook. Give us a little bit of your information, and we will email you both copies of our latest booklets. It's the top 10 things you need to know if you're a board member on a COA or an HOA and collecting delinquent fees for a COA or an HOA. Uh, because I, I guess when you get on these boards, you don't realize that that's one of the many responsibilities that you're going to have. I mean, I think it's kind of one of those things that you always figure, oh, no, somebody, you know, over yonder in some other room is taking care of that. No, that's the board of directors that's handling that. Absolutely. Yeah. And if the property management company is handling that per se, what role still does the board of directors play in that? What what scenarios or situations might come up that, that they need to be a part of? Well, the board should make sure that the manager is following whatever the board's collection policy is, so whatever they've set out for how many notices they're going to send, when they're going to take action, um, and they need to be reading their financials uh, and regularly get... so that they know where they stand and if mm -hmm. they need to perhaps change the direction of their collection policy to be more effective. And do they typically get a report as to who's delinquent you know, and, and how much and, the, and that sort of thing? Yes, for associations that have a licensed CAM, uh, they will get a in their board packet. It'll be uh, and it might be a summary financial status, but uh, yeah. whenever they have their regular board meetings, they'll get that from their property manager. And then once and if a they year, don't, I mean that's a red flag. That's a huge red flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And then once a year, they're going to sit down. The board should sit down with their manager or their CPA and put together their budget for the coming year. So they'll get they want to do an even more in depth analysis of their financial status at that and, time. And so they can also factor in that debt essentially, right? Because that right. you know we've talked about that on uh, the I think two or three shows where we've talked about finances you know uh, for these associations that oftentimes they don't factor in the outstanding fees, quote unquote, debt that the community has. Well, Candace and I were talking a couple of weeks ago about a situation where a board, the board is emotional because they're residents and everything else. Sure. And she was stressing back to me the importance of making sure that you adhere to a consistent policy, because as soon as you start deciding, well, Mary fell on bad luck and all that, you end up in selective enforcement. And you are really a, a, a municipality, if you will, for your association. And the way you collect your ass assessments are like property taxes. Sure. So you need to have that to operate the budget. Right. And you have to take that neutral approach and yeah. kind of take the empathy out of the equation, really, because what's at stake is, is even greater, which is the financial stability of your community. Yeah. And you have a responsibility, a fiduciary responsibility to manage 
that association as a as a director of that association. So mm. do not you know she runs into it where they don't do they do selective enforcement. Well, you know she's I saw her at the pool and she told me she's on tough times. You can't do that, right? Can the, you? Can you? You can't do that. That's not to say that you can't have empathy. But you need to actually factor empathy into your policy, right? which sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But you can say, you know, OK, if somebody contacts us within the first 90 days and asks for a payment plan of up to one year. Communicate we, that, right? Yeah. We will let them have that. We will give them that opportunity. Yeah. But we're going to do that for everyone. But if they cut off communications and they're not responding to any emails or any you know, phone calls or anything like that, at that point, you need to enforce the rules that are in place. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, we've been talking about frequently asked questions for your homeowners and condominium association uh, with us again. Uh, Candice Gundel, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure, as always. And then, of course, Dean Akers, head coach. Another great day. Yeah. So, uh, again, thank you so much to everybody listening across the state of Florida. If you need to get a hold of us, again, thecondocoaches.com is our website. Thecondocoaches.com is our website, 813-331-5415, 813-331-5415. Or help at thecondocoaches.com. That's been another show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to The Condo Coaches, brought to you by lmfunding.com. Find us online at thecondocoaches.com and join us this same time next week as we help you navigate life in your managed community.